If you're after a new smartphone and you really fancy a lovely stock Android experience like what you get with one of Google's Pixel blowers, well, your best bet is to get a Google Pixel, obviously. But thankfully, your options aren't that limited because quite a few other blowers offer a similar stock Android vibe in 2024. Big and small, cheap and wallet punch in the expensive. And I've reviewed quite a few recently, so here's my pick of the best stock Android smartphones right now. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So let's kick off with the most obvious option, Google's own Pixel mobiles, which are as stock as it gets, with the bonus of plenty of great Pixel exclusive features that are hoid on top. The most recent trio are the Pixel 8 8, the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro, which I've shot a tasty bit of three-way action on. So go check that out if you want a proper in-depth look at how they stack up. This here, Pixel 8 here, is the most budget-friendly of the bunch, although it's still not exactly what you'd call cheap at half a grand. And if you find that your wallet is constantly weighing you down, well, you can always upgrade to the more expensive Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro. But most people should be as happy as a pig in premium quality fecal matter with the cheaper Pixel 8a, which is still a fantastic everyday device, despite downgrading the design to plastic. And to be honest, I personally prefer the look of the Pixel 8a, compared with that shiny glass finish on the Pixel 8, which gets all smudgy and grimy as soon as you grope it. And while the 64 meg quad PD camera tech also isn't quite as premium on the Pixel 8a, you still get Google's SmartOS image processing abilities, so your pics will look almost as good even in quite dodgy lighting, while Google has once again chucked on its excellent AI-based editing tools. And the Pixel 8a has another benefit as well, it's a proper pocket pleaser measuring in at just 6.1 inches, although the chunky bezels do mean it's roughly the same size as the 6.2 inch Pixel 8. And despite its shriveled status, the Pixel 8a's battery life is still more than good enough for all day play. Just be aware that when it comes to recharging, the Pixel 8a is about as swift as a legless badger with a bag on its head. Packed into that plastic frame is Google's Tensor G3 chipset, which is just about powerful enough to cope with Genshin Impact on the highest graphics settings. And it doesn't get as toasty as older Tensor processors either. You've also got yourself a stunning and supremely sharp 120Hz OLED screen and a respectable stereo speaker setup, which certainly does the job for a nice bit of gaming or some light Netflix relief. And Google used to offer around four years of software support for its Pixel blowers, but the Pixel 8 series has been blessed with a frankly ludicrous seven years of OS and security updates. So I'll actually be almost 50 when this thing is finally defunct. When I say 50, what I actually mean is likely deceased because my liver will have finally given up and exploded. And don't forget those Pixel exclusive features like call screening, which is worth its bloody weight in gold. So straight up, the Pixel 8a is one of my favourite mid-range smartphones and one of the best stock Android blowers you can grab yourself right now. If you've got a bit more cash to spare and you want some of Google's latest tech, well, definitely check out those flagship Pixels. The Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro upgrade the primary camera sensor to a 50 megapixel Octa PD effort. And both of these phones are great for everyday photography. While the Pro serves up a high res mode and some proper good telephoto action to get some slick looking close ups. Either way, you get a banquet of addictive editing tools for sprucing up your photos and your home movies. Both of these flagships sport Google's fresh Tensor G3 chipset, which offers an incremental performance improvement over the original. It's still not the best option for gaming, but those heating problems have mostly been sorted out. As for the media chops, well, these flagships serve up some stunning AMOLED screen tech backed by respectable stereo speakers. Charging isn't particularly quick as usual, but at least both the Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro offer wireless charging support, and Google is serving up a full seven years of OS and security updates for these things, seeing you right the way through to 2030. And then there's the excellent Pixel exclusive features, including classics like that call screening, and new bits like the safety tools and the AI wallpaper generator, which is madder than a barrel of drunk raccoons. And don't forget that Google's older Pixel 7 blowers are still available online. You can usually pick them up for a pretty good deal, and they're still absolute bangers. Yeah, Tensor G2 isn't quite as capable, and it can be a wee bit burny. Well, the software support is capped at four years, or less than that now, of course, but they're still solid value. And if you happen to have so much cash lying around that you have to stick it all in a Scrooge McDuck-style vault, well, you might just about be able to afford the fresh new Google Pixel Fold. This sports a more compact design compared with rivals like Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 5, 
with a squat 5.8 inch cover screen that's much easier to type on and use one handed. Unfurl it and you've got yourself a proper big screen tablet style experience. Although multitasking isn't quite as simple as on some rivals and apps do tend to balk up a bit. The Tensor G2 chipset found in the Pixel 7a is once again running the show, so the Pixel Fold is reasonably good for gaming but does tend to heat up a bit under pressure. It is a shame you don't get that fresher Tensor G3 for sure, but the battery life is still pretty decent and the camera tech's respectable certainly for a foldable phone. Now 50 meg sensor is still pretty capable in low light. And you've got a decent zoom lens as well for once again getting closer to your subject. And if you fancy some googly action in your pants, well I've fully reviewed all of these Pixel blowers right here on Techspert. Just done a full six month long term review of the Pixel 8 Pro, so go check those out. Otherwise, if you're not quite swayed by a Pixel for whatever reason, but you still fancy yourself a compact handset like the Pixel 8a or the Pixel 8, well definitely don't sleep on the Asus Zenfone 10. This sub 6 inch smartphone is proper Wii, even dinkier than the Pixel 8a but with the same super slick stock Android experience. Although you've also got the option of switching to Asus's own Zen UI which adds a few extra bonus features on top. But don't judge the Zenfone 10 on its size because that top notch hand feel and effortless one handed action is just the cherry on the huge f off ice cream sundae. This is a flagship blower through and through, no questions at all. Packing Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset for proper beefcake performance, as well as absolutely ruzzy incredible battery life, among the very best in this roundup. However, definitely don't expect the same level of software support that you would get from Google for one of its Pixel blowers, because with the Zenfone 10, Asus is only promising two OS updates and three years of security updates. And the camera tech isn't quite as good either, struggling in more taxing conditions. But if you're absolutely sick of enormous oversized blowers and you want something a bit more hand friendly without sacrificing that clean Android experience, well, the Zenfone 10 is a bloody solid choice. And sadly, we are still waiting for Isus to pull its finger out and finally launch a Zenfone 11. And so far, all we've had is a Zenfone 11 Ultra. A considerably massiver smartphone compared with the Zenfone 10. Massiver, absolutely not a word, but I'm rolling with it like a pro. And sadly, the Zenfone 11 Ultra is a bit trouser, considering the steep asking price. So the only things ultra about it are the size of the bloody thing and that price tag. If you see it massively discounted, it might be worth a pun, but otherwise I wouldn't bother. Another quite jazzy alternative is Colpeer's Nothing Phone 2, which sports the most talked about rear end since Beyonce. Yeah, all the headlines are focused on that flashing disco bollocks known as the Glyph Lighten. It's basically just a glorified notifications light. But when you dive down beneath that literally flashy service, you'll find a worthy Pixel rival. You can choose between a stock Android vibe or that funkified Nothing Dot Matrix theming, but either way, it's a light and breezy experience. The Nothing Phone 2 is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which is getting on a bit, but still powerful enough to keep things running smoothly, even when you're gaming. And that battery life's pretty decent too, despite all of the arsehole light show shenanigans. And in fact, that Glyph Disco Lighting has been redesigned from the original Nothing Phone, with even more zones than before, as well as some nifty new features. The display is a beaut, and the camera is good enough for your everyday photography shenanigans, if not quite up to the standards set by those pixels. But bear in mind, the Nothing Phone 2 is also a 6.7 inch slab, comparable in size to the likes of the iPhone bloody Pro Max shenanigans. So you'll certainly need pretty sizable pockets to contain it. And if you're tempted, I actually just smashed out a full six month review, so go check that out. And if your stacks aren't quite fat enough for the Nothing Phone 2, well, no worries, you can still get yourself a bit of flashy light glyph action with this more budget friendly blower. The Nothing Phone 2A is yet another 6.7 inch big boy, this time with a placky back, a slimmed down glyph lighting setup and specs that aren't quite as impressive. But MediaTek's custom Dimensity 7200 Pro chipset is still meaty enough for everything up to and including mashing griblies in the face in Genshin Impact. While that battery life is pretty solid once again too. Definitely give my video a squint for all you need to know. Now Motorola is another manufacturer who sticks with a tasty bit of stock Android on all of its smartphones and its latest Billy Big Bollocks flagship to hit the UK is this here Motorola Edge 50 Ultra. It's another almighty 6.7 incher but that slender curved design makes this Moto feel more compact and it's pleasingly light to boot, complete with either a trouser rousing soft touch rear or a funky wood design. 
because who doesn't enjoy having a good bit of wood in their hand? That 144Hz PO-LED panel is bright and poppy and pleasingly crisp, while the stereo speakers pack quite a punch too. And there's also somehow space in this slender chassis for a mighty 4,500mAh capacity battery, which supports 125 watt wired charging and 50 watt wireless charging. Frankly smacks the tits off those Google and Samsung blowers. The Moto Edge 50 Ultra's 50 meg main camera is backed by a decent telephoto zoom lens for getting closer to the action, so photography fans are sorted. And the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 can happily handle anything you hoy at it, including plenty of head bopping action in Genshin Impact. And the Motorola Edge 50 Ultra boasts a pretty clean stock version of Android naturally, otherwise it wouldn't be here in this roundup, complete with a few tasty Moto morsels chucked on top including an improved gaming mode, bonus security tools, yada yada yada. However, it does have to be said that Motorola isn't quite as reliable as Google and some other rivals when it comes to the actual software updates. You got three years of guaranteed OS upgrades here, then that's your whack, and those security patches can be a wee bit sporadic, shall we say. Alternatively, for a lot less cash than the Moto Edge 50 Ultra, you can also bag yourself the Edge 50 Fusion. This boasts the same slick stock Android software setup. You've got a similar skinny and lightweight design with some bright and spangly color options. And Motorola has even crammed in a bigger 5,000 milliamp hour capacity battery. I'm yet to review the Motorola Edge 50 Fusion, unfortunately, but hopefully soon. And then there's the Moto Edge 40 Neo with its spangly Lardy Dar hand-picked Panton designs like Soothen Sea and Keneal Beer complete with a fancy fake leather arse. And it even smells a bit whiffy thanks to Motorola's partnership with a perfume company to give it a couple of sprays before it leaves the factory. So of course, as soon as you yank it out of the box, your wife storms in and demands to know why you smell like a whore's handbag. Up front, you've got a gorgeous 6.55 inch, 144Hz POLED display backed by stereo speakers. A rather cracking setup at this price. However, the Motorola Edge 40 Neo serves up more basic performance than its siblings with the MediaTek Dimensity 7030 running the show. There's still enough grunt to run the latest games, albeit on lower graphics settings if they're proper memory guzzlers like Genshin Impact. And you've got a big old meaty 5000mAh capacity battery for all day play, and the wired charging is still pretty nippy at 68 watts, although sadly there's no wireless charging support this time. And that 50 meg primary camera is fine for everyday photography, if not as capable as the excellent Pixel 8a. So if photography is a priority for you, I'd say go Google instead. And if you're partial to a bit of bendy blower action, well Motorola also serves up its own foldable in the Razer 40 Ultra. This latest Razer reboot is Motorola's best foldable yet, and indeed one of the best compact flippy phones you can grab in 2024. The Ultra model boasts a wanging great 3.6 inch P-OLED cover screen with 144Hz refresh support, convenient for quickly fiddling about in any of your apps, or simply replying to messages without going to all the effort of actually unfolding the bugger. If you do actually put your thumb through the gruelling exercise of flipping open this phone, while well, your peepers will be greeted with a gorgeous 6.9 inch internal display. It's once again a gorgeous poppy display, this time with LTPO tech, so that refresh rate scales all the way up from bugger all to a silky smooth 165Hz. And that's backed by respectable stereo speakers. It's essentially the same slick stock Android experience you'll find on the rest of the Motorola mobile lineup, except with a few extra features chucked in for that cover screen, including some fun wee time wasters, which are surprisingly addictive. The battery life is actually decent for a foldable if you're not too demanding. And yeah, that Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 may be getting on a wee bit, but it keeps everything running smoothly. It's only the less than fantastic camera tech and the fact that the price tag ain't exactly affordable that might turn people away from this otherwise rather ruddy good Moto Mobile. Now, if you don't have the cash for any of these Motorola smartphones that we've discussed so far, well, maybe check out the Moto G84. It costs just 250 puns here in Blighty, and yet you still get a snazzy leather style back with plenty of vibrant colour options. Again, that OLED display is a proper eye pleaser, maxing out at 120Hz and backed by stereo speakers for a merry old Netflix session. You've got a big old beefy 5000mAh capacity battery again, so again the Moto G84 certainly should not be dead by dusk, although the charging is a bit slower now at just 30 watts. 
and this smartphone is powered by the creaky old Snapdragon 695. Certainly no one's going to be dribbling into their neck flesh thinking about all that raw power, but it is good enough for gaming on Call of Duty, PUBG etc. And even Genshin Impact can kind of run on the lowest graphics settings. As for the camera tech, well the Moto G84 sports a 50 megapixel primary sensor with optical image stabilisation built in and it's a perfectly okay-ish snapper. That stabilisation helps out a wee bit in dimmer light and for your everyday snaps you can get sharp colourful results as long as the conditions aren't too cack. Look past the limited software support and the Moto G84 is solid value with a lovely stock Android vibe to boot. And for even less cash, if you're on a really, really strict budget, you can snap all the even cheaper Moto G54. Although this time we are talking proper basic specs. This plastic slab boasts water repellent design so it can get splashed without exploding. And you've got all the usual features stuffed on here, including NFC, a headphone jack and micro SD support, plus Motorola's bonus bits. That 6.5 inch IPS screen is nothing special, but it supports 120Hz refresh while the MediaTek chipset is just about good enough for everyday shenanigans and some light gaming, along with a bit of 5G support. The 5000mAh capacity battery keeps you going all day too, no matter what you're up to, but charging is slow as balls while the camera struggles and even mildly testing conditions. And last up, if you are on an extremely tight budget but you do love a bit of stock Android action, well you might be highly tempted by HMD Global's latest lineup. HMD are best known for spaffing out Nokia branded phones, but their freshest blows are self-branded and generally very bloody affordable. And I'm hoping to review them really, really soon, as soon as those samples actually come in. So, you know, poke, subscribe, etc. Don't want to be missing out. And there you have it, my lovelies. That's my pick of the very best stock Android smartphones you can grab yourself right now. But did I miss out your own personal pick? Well, I've only included stuff that I've personally fondled and tested so it'd be great to hear your own personal preferences down in the comments below please do plug subscribe ding that notifications bell yada 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 and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week cheers everyone love you